Okay, today we're going to discuss another mysterious discovery coming from our own planet, planet Earth, in case you're watching this from somewhere else. And in this case, it's a discovery coming out of NASA and specifically focusing on some really bizarre geological discoveries that currently cannot be explained, and specifically discoveries in regards to oxygen and the magnetic field of planet Earth. Because according to this new study by Wei Jiaquan and the team you see here, there seems to be a very strong link between the amount of oxygen on planet Earth and the strength of the magnetosphere around the planet. And this bizarre correlation seems to have been true for the past 540 million years, and possibly even longer, but we just don't really have any records going back farther than that. And so here, let's discuss this a little bit more, focusing on what was discovered, obviously focusing on how this was discovered as well, but I guess more importantly, talk about potential explanations, although just so you know, for now this is completely unknown and completely unexpected. But I guess let's start with the basics. Or let's start with the magnetic field, which we know acts as a protective shield against a lot of radiation from both the sun and outer space, as it essentially deflects most of the solar wind and most of the cosmic rays, preventing them from stripping the ozone layer in the upper atmosphere. And the ozone layer obviously protects life on the surface, by shielding us from some of the higher energy radiation as well, with quite a lot of charged particles eventually being trapped in the Van Allen radiation belts that can actually swell to dramatic sizes during the increased solar activity, and as we have discovered recently, can even form new belts if the activity is extreme, like during the May 2024 geomagnetic storm. But today it's believed that for life, it's the protection of the ozone layer that seems to be the most important. And that's because our sun produces a lot of UV radiation, with the ozone layer protecting life on the surface from the excess of UV light. And so hypothetically, without the magnetic field, over time the solar wind would gradually strip away most of the Earth's atmosphere, which is very likely what happened on Mars. As a matter of fact, the observations from various Martian orbiters have physically demonstrated that it still happens even today, when various ions have been captured by the orbiters leaving the surface of the planet. And so in theory this is what would happen to Earth without the magnetosphere as well. As you can see from this video, this was physically captured and detected by MAVEN in orbit around Mars. But when it comes to studying the magnetic field on our planet, in the last few decades researchers have actually been able to work out how strong it was, or to be more exact how strong the dipole moment was, through a science known as paleomagnetism. And here this is usually done by examining iron-rich minerals, which very often have a lot of particles aligned with the magnetic field as this mineral solidifies. For example, when we have divergent plates or plates that are spreading apart, all of the lava that solidifies and produces all sorts of magnetite ends up leaving behind quite a lot of minerals, such as for example magnetite, that then aligns itself following the magnetic field. And so basically a lot of mineral records and a lot of sedimentary records very often tell us about what sort of a magnetic field planet Earth used to have, where it was pointed, and how strong it was. And you can kind of see the overall strength in the graph right here, with the orange line basically showing us that it actually increased in the last 540 million years. But the magnetic field today is definitely not at its strongest. In contrast, when it comes to the oxygen levels, and specifically the atmospheric oxygen levels, this can be derived from a lot of different indicators such as the abundance of certain sediments in various types of charcoal. This is usually what's left after certain forest fires, and it can actually tell us a lot about the levels of oxygen during certain periods of time. And so for example by looking at super old charcoal discovered in certain sediments, it does become possible to work out the oxygen levels as well. Naturally though, because charcoal did not exist too far back, here we do have limited data as well. In contrast, something similar can be done by studying various crystals with a lot of air bubbles stuck inside, for example in the crystals of salt. These are usually known as halides. And so the halide samples very often contain tiny bubbles from the extremely ancient atmosphere on the planet, which kind of provides us with an actual ancient sample, allowing researchers to figure out what atmosphere was like millions of years ago. And likewise here, we have a graph that's a little bit different, but surprisingly somewhat similar. In the last 540 million years, the oxygen level for the most part have been going up, and in essence seem to show a direct correlation. Correlation with the magnetic field on the planet itself. But the biggest surprise is actually something you see in this picture as well. Here the researchers at the Goddard Space Flight Center at NASA were actually shocked to discover 
that there seems to be a direct correlation when you look at the data set between 350 to 250 million years ago. So basically here there's a very strange spike which is very very difficult to explain. And that of course led the scientists behind this paper to start searching for more clues and to try to figure out if there's maybe some kind of a hidden cause we've never considered before or something else that might have been ignored previously. Because mathematically here the link is very strong. In terms of the actual statistics the correlation is 0.72, which means that it's unlikely to be pure chance. But the reasons though are completely unclear. In other words, it's currently uncertain if one of these factors influences the other or if it's just a correlation based on something entirely different. For example, it is possible that geomagnetic field controls oxygen levels somehow. Or vice versa, maybe it's the oxygen that seems to somehow produce stronger magnetic fields. Here the scientists provide both potential explanations on what could be happening. So if this is the result of the geomagnetic field, it might be just the result of the protection of the atmosphere against different types of space weather. For example, based on a lot of previous research, we know that planets without a magnetic field will extremely likely lose most of their atmosphere. Although here a better comparison would be between total atmospheric levels and the strength of the magnetic field. Now unfortunately today we don't really have continuous detailed graphs of atmospheric pressure in Earth's entire history, but there are some graphs showing us an estimate, mostly based on various raindrop imprints, various inclusions inside rocks, and especially by measuring ratios of certain gases such as nitrogen and argon. But these measurements are not as accurate and so they are unlikely to be very useful to help us understand this correlation. On the other hand, maybe the magnetic field is just a kind of a shield. It protects life, which then produces more oxygen. And so if plants and a lot of algae in the oceans are protected from a lot of extreme radiation, they will obviously produce more oxygen. And so as the geomagnetic field increases, so does the success of life. Obviously though, right now there is really no indication if this is correct because this is just an assumption. In contrast, what if it's actually the oxygen that seems to be the result of everything? Well, in that case, it's very likely geological in nature and probably involves plate tectonics. And that's because plate tectonics generally recycle crust on the planet and this recycling process possibly puts a lot of oxygen into the mantle, maybe impacting the lower mantle, which can then affect the geomagnetic field by making the material churn faster or more efficiently. In other words, maybe, and this is a big maybe, if there's more oxygen deposited into rocks and those rocks then end up inside the mantle, this chemical enrichment somehow increases the magnetic field through processes we don't understand. And so here this would be some kind of a direct chemical effect on the mantle itself. Or alternatively, maybe this is actually guided by plate tectonics and oxygen is just a byproduct. In other words, maybe the plate tectonics do influence the magnetosphere by maybe pushing things inside the mantle but at the same time somehow change the chemical processes on the surface which then ends up impacting oxygenation and increases the production of oxygen. Or in other words, maybe there is some kind of a third factor that causes both of these events at the same time. So there could be some kind of a third geochemical or geophysical process that researchers have not discovered yet. But luckily because of the discovery of this very strange and very unusual peak, if researchers can identify something else that happened around the same time, they might work out what mechanism seems to drive everything. And surprisingly, we know that something did happen during this period. Here, surprisingly, the spike coincides with the existence of Pangaea, one of several supercontinents that formed on the planet, in this case approximately 320 million years ago. But it also broke up 195 million years ago, so there is a bit of a correlation. It's not exact, but it is something. And here it's once again not entirely clear why this would increase oxygen and increase the magnetosphere, but one possible explanation is a massive tectonic rearrangement. So in other words, it's once again some kind of a result of plate tectonic activity, but in this case, because plate tectonics kind of stopped, somehow it started to increase both oxygen and the magnetosphere quite dramatically. But unfortunately, we only have this one data point and not the other supercontinents that we know existed a long time ago. Nevertheless, a pretty exciting potential link. In other words, this link maybe suggests that supercontinents possibly dramatically increased magnetic fields and oxygen levels. But until researchers get more data, especially data from when supercontinents existed on the planet, this is just going to be an assumption and a hypothesis. 
mostly because we don't have reliable data for oxygen older than 540 million years. And so one of the conclusions in the study is that, well, it is most likely just the result of the effects from the magnetic field itself, which potentially protects oxygen on the surface. So basically the most likely solution is that geomagnetism seems to affect oxygen levels and not the other way around. But once again, this is at least for now just an assumption. And mostly because we do understand geomagnetic properties pretty well, but we don't really understand how plate tectonics or chemistry inside the mantle might change the magnetic field as a result of oxygenation. And well, that's pretty much the conclusion. But in order to strengthen this link, and in order to discover maybe some other explanations, the next step is to obviously search for additional factors or some other geochemical signs from ancient Earth that could help us understand what happened around this time. And if we can figure out what happened, this could essentially become very important for the field of astrobiology or the search for extraterrestrial life. Because that way, we can finally narrow down major requirements for life on a lot of other planets. And if it does turn out to be some kind of a geomagnetic requirement, this is technically something that one day we'll be able to detect. Mostly because geomagnetic fields produce quite a lot of radioactivity. But until future discoveries or until we discover something else, that's pretty much it. You can find all of the studies and all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos you might have never seen before, videos without any ads and some other stuff, maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership which grants you early access and also some other stuff as well, or maybe buy the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.